right, thank you for tuning in to the Santino Brothers Wrestling and Channel. Um, what I'm going to talk to you guys uh, today about is uh, the art of cutting a promo. So um, I'm going to give you some pointers and some tips on how to cut the promo. Um, and so that way it'll, it'll help you out uh, for any aspiring wrestler or even a wrestler that's, just, uh, that's, uh, that's been doing it for a while but that's having a hard time, um, you know, really breaking through. Um, and cutting that promo. I mean, what I always tell the students um, at wrestling school is that you know you might be, you know, you might be really great at the the physical aspect of professional wrestling, um, uh, and uh, but you might be lacking in the um, in the promo department. And if you're lacking in the promo department, um, that's really gonna, um, you know, that's gonna slow your career down uh, just a bit. You know, so now you can actually be average in the physical aspect of wrestling but be incredibly great at the promo aspect of professional wrestling and that's going to actually skyrocket you uh to the uh, to the main event that's going to take you on to uh, to do more programs uh more storylines in professional wrestling you'll have more segments uh more times to uh to actually get the mic uh, and you know that's another thing you know sometimes i've been on a card where uh some of these uh you know, or, um, you know, everyone's got a match except me, you know, and I might have a promo. Um, and sometimes you'll feel a little sad about that, you know, because you we all work hard. We get in the ring and everything that we do in the ring and all the stunts that we do and all the moves that we do. Um, we, I always try to tell the students, you know, we do that for us, you know, because it's fun. And so that's why uh, when we just have a promo sometimes, or usually the first time, um, we feel left out. We feel like we're not having a part of the fun. But let me tell you this, you know, a promo is a match. You know, and it's actually, a promo is better than a match. You know, that's, uh, I think that's just something to really think about and understand that if, uh, if a promoter booker is giving you the mic and giving you a segment um, on a show, um, they're actually putting a lot of faith in you. And not only that, I might be booked to wrestle on this show and someone else might be have a, have a promo. I might not be booked on the next show. Usually nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, whatever the case is, uh, I, a, a, you know, if I have a promo, I'm going to be already booked on the next show. You know, um, or if I have a promo, that means they care about that I might be missing the next show, so they're setting it up for when I come back. So it's always a really great thing to get to have a promo um, on the card. Don't ever feel down that, hey, you know, hey, how come I didn't get a match? You know, when, you, when, when you're getting good, they're going to give you a promo, a segment, um, a match, a run-in. Uh, and it really just happens like that, you know, because um, somebody is very charismatic, uh, very natural on the mic. Um, it makes it a lot easier to drive our storylines in professional wrestling. So some of the pointers uh, that we have is, you know, you want to you want to tell a story, you know, um, in your promo, you know, when you're describing yourself. Uh, you know, Stone Cold had the, the famous uh, Austin 316 promo and he talked about uh, Jake Roberts' uh, thumb in his Bibles, talking about his Psalms and his John 316s. So it gives you that visual of, of looking through a Bible and thumbing through it. And that's what you want to do is you want to, you know, tell a story and visually paint a story uh, with what you're verbally saying. You know, it's so important. So that way, you, um, as a fan, you're, you, uh, we're, you know, every promo that we've watched, we're usually, um, um, you know, enthralled by it because of the, the vision that the, the uh, promo, the promo that the, that the wrestler is giving is uh, painting for us, you know, and we really, we really get involved into that. So we want to be able to tell a story, you know, whether you're telling a story. And a lot of times when we're first time we're doing a promo, it's, you know, who are you, where are you from, and what is your why? What is your mission? You know, what is your reason for wanting to be a professional wrestler, to capture the belt, whatever the case is, you know. So you want to tell a story. And so if you're if you're a pain individual, you want to tell people that, the you know, the, the fire poker stick in your back, it burns and it hurts, you know, and you're letting people know that. And so that way they can visualize that that uh, poker very red hot and it's going through someone's back and it really hurts. So we want to really on any story that we tell we want to tell that story uh, visually painting the picture okay so that's so let's we want to visually paint the picture if we're going to tell the story and you know so like you know what i do is i you know i was never by any means incredibly great at promos i always had the luxury of uh, a lot of the times having a manager 
Um, and my manager, uh, Ryan Katz, uh, GQ Money and XPW, he really helped me um, and gave me the tools that I needed in order to get through and to cut a promo. I always thought he was really great on the mic, um, you know, up there with, uh, with, with the likes of Paul Heyman, you know. And so he really, uh, GQ Money really taught me. You know, being with him, I would, you know, I'd hit one-liners. He'd hit the majority of the promo. I'd hit one-liners. You know, if I got comfortable, I would do a little bit more. But it really helped me uh, to be able to cut the promo. But what I also had to do is I had to practice, practice, practice. You know, I had to practice. I practiced in the car when I was in traffic. I practiced in the shower. I practiced when I was looking in the mirror. I mean, I just practiced it over and over and over. And not only that, um, I would just try to... Um, let it flow naturally, you know what I mean? I would try to be in character in front of my friends, you know, whether they like that or not, you know, I, probably a lot of people don't like that, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that, that I did in order to, to help me, uh, progress my promos, you know, so we want to tell a story, um, never just memorize your lines, a lot of the times you're going to have bookers and promoters come up to you and they're going to say, hey, we need you to say this, and, you know, you can go ahead and say that, uh, but don't just memorize your lines. You know, you want to know your character, know what your motivation is, know what you're saying. So you should have some bullet points, uh, dismantle that person's promo, and put it back together in your own thoughts and your own words. You know, so you never want to memorize a line because, and then also when you're memorizing a line, we can see right through you. And when I say we, the fans can see right through you, um, and we don't believe your promo because you don't believe it because you're just memorizing lines. So you never want to memorize a line. Um, usually when someone gives you a promo booker or not, um, those take those as bullet points they might say it smooth smiley or gq money would always say the promo very smooth um but then i could never memorize it i'd always have to try to make it my own uh so let's go ahead and do that uh, we talked about uh, knowing your character so important you want to know um who your character is what they do um you know before they go to bed um what time do they wake up um, do they drink milk or whiskey? Um, you want to know all these little details that may never come out in a promo, but you want to know all these details so that way you can understand your character so when anything is thrown at you, you have an answer for it. You don't have to think about it. There's no thinking involved. It's just getting the point across in the promo, now telling that story. So you've got to really understand your character um, every which way, not like the back of your hand because it's very important. Um, when cutting a promo that you understand who you are because then when you really think about it It's not really cutting a promo. You're just doing your character. You know what I mean? You just it, it makes your wrestling and everything a lot easier So you definitely want to do that. Um, we talked about know your motivation You know you want to know your motivation on what you're cutting this promo on right? Maybe I'm introducing myself uh, maybe I have a chance to, uh, to fight for the championship title. Uh, maybe I'm in a death match, ladder match, or whatever the case is. What is your motivation? Maybe uh, this guy stole stole your manager, uh, who is your girlfriend, and now you want you're seeking revenge. Know your motivation of what you're saying in that promo because it's so important. Um, to know where you're going, right? I see so many people just cut a promo um, and they just kind of just keep going and going and going, right? And if you're going to cut a promo, understand what it's like to cut a 30-second promo, a 60-second promo, and a two-minute promo um, because that's you're going to be called upon that in order to do that. And then you would ask yourself, like, man, how do I cut a... How do I cut a 30 second promo? Is there going to be a timer up? No, there's not going to be a timer up. So you just have to practice. You got to figure it out. Be able to get your whole promo across in 30 seconds. So you have the 30 second version. You have the one minute version, and then you have the two minute version. You know, and so you. How do we do that? Well, we shorten it up, and then we fill the gaps when we when our promos go a little bit longer. How do we fill the gaps? With our character and our charisma um, and our personality. Um, that's that is what's going to fill it in. Like, what is that? Well, that's the rock smell in the air or tilting his glasses down and lifting his eyebrow. All those little things is what you can do. Even wrestlers would do this and they would just breathe into the camera. So think about stuff like that uh, if you need to elongate. Sometimes, you know, there's people like CM Punk that have everything they need to say. They don't need to fill that gap. They don't need to fill any time. Um, so definitely... You want to uh, know your motivation on what you're saying and know your character. Next part uh, is going to be, you know, 
speak from the heart, right? That goes back to don't you right, uh, don't just memorize your lines. Speak from the heart. So if someone gives you something to do. Um, how do we speak from the heart? Well, you know, like what situation is it in your promo that you need? So do you need to be happy? Do you need to be sad? Do you need to be mad? Do you need to be confused? Whatever the case is. Say you have to be sad in the promo. So you got to take yourself in something in your real life that's happened to you. You know, what makes you sad? Does somebody pass away that makes you sad? Your girlfriend broke up with you, it makes you sad. What do you gotta do? What do you have to tap into in order to bring that energy out and to put it out into a promo? You know, that's what you gotta think about um, when you speak from the heart. So speaking on uh, something that's real to you. You know, I think some of the best promos um, are when people add that realism to it. Uh, something that's really affected their life. Um, and I think we see it uh, time and time again um, in pro wrestling, you know, where where something becomes real. Like, you know, you can go as simple as like the NWO, you know, Scott Hall and Kim Nash getting fired. You know what I mean? They're bringing their real life situation up um, in, into, into the promo or even like, you know, Matt Hardy and I think it was Edge. You know, they had that extramarital affair angle that they were actually happening in real life and they brought it to TV. Probably very uncomfortable, but if you can learn in order to to get through that uncomfortableness, it's going to really make uh, for great promos. And just on the indie level, here at Santino Brothers, you know, uh, I think Ray Rosas, when he came back last year in July uh, 2019, uh, he, he cut one of the best promos that I've ever seen because it really came from the heart. Um, and for people that don't know, you know, Santino Brothers and me and Ray Rosas, we had a falling out for, you know, for three years. And that's why I talk about, like, Fuck heat and wrestling. It doesn't last. It's not worth it. You don't want to lose that time with your with the people that you care about. Um, and I'm glad that we, you know, we were able to uh, to make amends with uh, me and Ray, and so we could we would be able to work together. But the promo that he came back with was that he did get kicked out of Santino Brothers, and how he did wear the eyes, and he did represent the eyes, the eyes meaning the Santino Brothers eyes, and how it affected him, and um, and now how the prodigal son has returned, and that promo is just incredible, and it's great, and it really came from the heart, you know what I mean? Um, but that does take a lot, you know, to to really bring these real life situations uh, to life. So speaking from the heart, that's how you would do that, and that's a way to do that is to take a situation or just channel into that you know um, you know maybe you had a parent that died that makes you sad or makes you angry so channel into that because you have to be angry in your promo so that's what you want to do um, speak from the heart you know something that's gonna real like make make it you know if if, uh, if you don't believe what you're saying why the fuck are the fans you know me gonna believe what you're saying if you don't believe it yourself so you want to speak from the heart um, and then it, Paul, also with that, you know, Buddha Khan would always teach me is that it starts right here with the eyes, starts right behind the eyes. You know, um, you want to have that real realism so that way we can really believe, you know, what the old saying is that the eyes are the windows to the soul, you know, so it definitely makes a lot of sense. You want to have it like Stone Cold is incredible at that is that like he turns it on you see him doing his podcast and he's regular uh, Steve Austin and then wrestler will try to banter with him and then he turns on Stone Cold and you can see the frow the brow coming over his head and you can see it in his eyes and it's so he becomes real um, and that's what makes him such a you know an icon in professional wrestling is because he was always real um, or at least portrayed himself as real in the professional wrestling ring um, so that's why it's so important to speak from the heart um, Right, know what you're talking about. So maybe you need to have bullet points, um, you know, bullet points of, you know, uh, when, where, and, you know, what for. So, you know, when is July 19th? Where at the Jack in the Box Arena? And what for for the championship belt for my revenge, uh, you know, for my number one contender shot, um, whatever the case is. So you want to add that in there and tell that story of, of, uh, of having that bullet point so that way you can have it come um, naturally to you. How do you have it come naturally to you? It's because you understand your character. You understand the character's personality. You understand everything about it. Um, so that's what makes that uh, incredibly a lot easier. You know, you definitely want to have, in your promos, you want to have tones. You know, you don't just want to be on a straight tone and just straight talking. 
um, without inflecting, you know, a little bit more excitement, getting maybe getting a little bit louder, and then bringing it a little bit lower. Um, but you want to have those tones in wrestling because it's the the emotions um, that are going through you as you're speaking through this promo. You know, maybe there's a there's a promo where you're very, you know, you're, everything is subtle to you, um, and you're just speaking very low. You know, and then as you're speaking about them attacking you with a chair, you get louder and louder and louder, and because you get angry and angry. So you definitely want to have tones and have it come up and down and the same thing like a match we talk about the, the match has to have gears you don't want to just be on the same gear the entire match you know you there, there's time to go to first gear second gear third gear fourth gear bring it back down as you're taking heat down to second gear building back up down to you want to take it home to the finish and get to sixth gear um so that same thing tones are the same thing you want to have those tones that go kind of up and down um uh, so that people can really engage um, and be attracted to what you're saying, you know, um, you know, it's this boring speaker. You don't want to have a boring speaker. You want to have a speaker that, um, will speak to you, um, and be very animated, especially in professional wrestling because professional wrestling is bigger than life. Um, and so you want your promos to be bigger than life, you know, and have that real, real tone to it. So we talked about, uh, show your character's personality. So there's always going to be those gaps in, the, in, in in your promo. What are you doing? Are you flexing? Are you mean mugging the camera? You know, I would always, you know, get my flex on in the camera while Smiley was talking. So I would show my character in the promo. You know, uh, a lot of wrestlers do it. You know, Macho Man does it. Um, I mean, Ric Flair, just the way he looks. Um, just, you know, so important. Uh, to be able to do that, to show your character and show your personality um, in the promo. Um, and then also, you know, as you're doing that, believe what you're saying. You also want to build your promo. You know, just like we talk to the students about building a match, you want to build your promo. You know, layer after layer after layer as you're telling their story, it leads to the end. You know, it's like the, uh, the Ring of Honor um, CM Punk uh, promo um, when he won the belt. Um, and he talks the story about the snake and, and, and how the snake is injured and how this guy uh, uh, takes the snake in and, and, and um, uh, he takes care of the snakes and recoups it and the snake gets, becomes 100%. And once the snake becomes 100%, uh, the snake bites him and the guy says, why did you do that? You know, I took care of you. I did this. And he says, because I'm a snake. And he was telling the story. CM Punk was he. He was telling the story that he is that snake. You know, he shouldn't have trusted me. He shouldn't have trusted me. Um, so really, you know, believing what you're saying, building that promo through a story that we're imagining this snake, you know, this Adam and Eve snake, um, and then who's the devil, and it's just, you know, it makes for a really good promo um, when you do that, when you build it, you know. Um, I also like to think that you want to treat a promo like an exciting match, right? Going back to, hey, if you only have a promo on the show, that's great. A promo is better than a match. I think a promo is better than a match. It's going to, what you can do in a four minute, two minute, three minute promo, um, you can get across a lot better than a 10 minute match sometimes, you know? And, you know, uh, because it's going to let people know who your personality is, um, what you are and what you do. So, uh, definitely, you always got to remember a promo is a match. Sometimes it is better than a match. Um, and you get a lot more out of it. You can go over there and shit the bed in the promo. Now people aren't going to watch your match. But if you go out there and you nail the promo and hit, the, hit it out of the ballpark, you know, you're going to draw asses to seats to watch your match. And that's exactly what a promo is. And that's, what, that's the purpose of it. That's what makes it so important. Tip. A tip that I always like is I always know, uh, learned in... Um, always watching uh, uh, pro wrestling with my buddy Scott and uh, he'd always talk to me about he loved Ric Flair he'd always talk to me about Ric Flair promos and how you always how we always said hey do you ever notice how how some guys will just talk down to their opponents and then he'll say like what does that make them when he just talks down to their opponents you know oh this you know okay I'm Joey Chaos and the guy that I'm wrestling is he sucks and he's terrible he never finished wrestling school he doesn't even have any good wrestling moves and he's never won a match right so I just shit on him shit on him shit on him shit on him what does that say about me I'm in that same fucking match. You're not in there with a fucking contender, obviously, because you just shit him down. What we always noticed was Ric Flair would always build, 
build, build, build his opponents up, and then he would chop them down. You know, that, I think that was so, so important. You know, you want to build them up. You want to say, hey, you know, uh, I'm Joey Cass, but, you know, you know, the guy that I'm wrestling, I'm wrestling, uh, I, I don't know, football man, you know, and football man, he's, he's, he's won 14 Super Bowls, and he's been the MVP 13 times, and he is a champion among champions, but let me tell you something, when he steps in the ring with Joey Chaos, and he's laying on the on his back, advertising the fact that he just got chaosified, then he'll know, you know, I'm the man. So, what you want to do is just really build them up, talk about what their accomplishments are, so then you can get ready to chop them down. Now people are going to be very interested in your match, very interested in the uh, in the bout that you're about to wrestle because uh, you're, you might be the champion and then you're wrestling this guy who brings all his accolades to there um, and now we really want to see what the outcome is uh, because you're building your opponent up. You know, um, always important, 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 build your opponent up uh, because otherwise you're just wrestling a nobody, a jabroni, um, a popcorn match, as we say. What's a popcorn match? Hey, you tell your partner that you're watching wrestling, let's go get some popcorn because we can afford to not see this match. We want to see the next one. Uh, so you never want to be the popcorn match. Um, so you definitely want to uh, definitely want to build your opponents up uh, and then chop them down. Never just chop, chop, chop. Um, I always think, you know, we always heard about stories about Brian Pillman, and Pillman was always great at, at promos, and always we heard stories, he'd be in the car um, reading a thesaurus, you know, from, from, from page one to the end of the page, um, and trying to figure out how to, you know, use different words in professional wrestling. And I think that's so important. You don't want to just say the same thing. The fact of the matter, the bottom line is, like, you don't, you don't want to say those same key things that a lot of people say because then you just get uh, thrown and mixed into the shuffle. Um, so it's a really good idea. Get a thesaurus. And I know, hey, we have smartphones or have your fucking smartphone. Download a thesaurus app. Download a dictionary app. Uh, that's how long we've been doing this. Uh, so we used to say, get a thesaurus and read it from, you know, uh, end to end and get a dictionary and read it from end to end. Um, and also it's just so there's something good to maybe just have in your, uh, in your bag because we all know that the batteries die on our phones. So it's so important to, uh, to, you know, have that thesaurus in there so you can read it, educate yourself. It's so important, um, to educate yourself and practice, 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 you know, um, what, you know, so... Those are some of the tips that I have when giving a uh, for giving a promo. Um, some of the promos that you guys can watch. Some of my favorite ones. Um, I liked the SmackDown one uh, with Eddie Guerrero. Uh, he he says over and over it's his heel turn, and he's on SmackDown talking to Rey Mysterio, and he talks about, "Do you think this makes me happy?" And he turned on Rey Mysterio, and man, when you know Eddie Guerrero's got that. Latino heat, you know, and you could see the vein popping out in his neck and just the way he says it, it just really makes you believe because he believes what he's saying. You know what I mean? It's a great promo by Eddie Guerrero. Um, do you think it makes me happy? Um, and, 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 but Eddie was like, he really was really good at translating that the real life, um, of, of, in, in, to pro wrestling and to promos. You know what I mean? And really bringing that character alive. You know, so I think you should definitely check out that promo. Another one that I like is uh, the Cactus Jack uh, from ECW Kane Dewey promo. You know, where a fan had a sign that said Kane Dewey, you know, with the kendo stick. Um, and, and it was kind of, I think it probably, I think it was before his Mankind um, stint. And it kind of was like a little bit of the Mankind, but it is Mick Foley, you know. Um, and uh, he was just talking about, you sick fans, you sick fucks. Dewey is a three-year-old kid, and you guys want to do this, and this is why I hate ECW. And I just thought it was a great poem because of the, the realism. I'm pretty sure as a father, he was pissed to see that sign. You know, who wouldn't be? You know, so it really brought that real emotion out. So definitely check out that promo um, by Cactus Jack. Um, another one, obviously, is classic. You know, Dusty Rhodes, Hard Times promo. You know, talks about hard times, about working 20 years for somebody, and then all they do is give you a watch um, and send you on your way, Daddy. You know, um, about hard times, what it is like to be hard times, and how Ric Flair has made hard times, given hard times to Dusty Rhodes. And that's what that promo is right. Right, man, Dusty is the one of the best at it, the greatest at it. Um, watch that promo. If you don't know about it, um, definitely watch it. It's one of the great ones. Um, Steve Austin, I always love the ECW shoot promo. 
where he actually talks about Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair, and and he talks in in their voice, and I think he's even dressed up as Hulk Hogan, um, and he and and I always thought that was a real promo right from real life, bringing about he he hey hey maybe me and me he would say hey maybe me and uh, Hogan can work, and no, Daddy, that's not for you, that's for somebody else, and he would talk in those voices uh, of Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes, and it just really made for a great promo. And then obviously, like one of the granddaddies of them all, the Austin 316 promo. Um, so important. Um, you know, really telling that story. Uh, one of my favorite promos of my time when it came out in 96. You know, Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. And then everyone just eats it up. Sometimes you say, you tell your best promos, and the best promos happen um, after, a, uh, after a match. You know what I mean? Um, after a match, your, your adrenaline's pumping, everything's going. Um, and so it's a little bit, sometimes a little bit easier to, uh, to, uh, call a promo. I always loved, uh, Scott Steiner's, uh, TNA, uh, percentage promo. I thought that was a great, incredible promo, uh, about how all the percentages and what, how many, what the percentage of what Samoa Joe had in order to beat him. And he did all the math and it was, it all matched up and it was great. Uh, it was the Steiner math, and I thought like it was a great, it was a great promo because it told a story, and we were going through it. You know, definitely want to check that one out. Um, but there's a lot of great promos out there. Uh, you just want to go through a list of them and just watch hours and hours among hours of promos, uh, so that way it'll help you out. And that's uh, something that you have to do um, in order to, uh, to to you know to to really uh, get your promos down. And become great at the promos because if you want to be great in professional wrestling, um, you need to have your promos down. Really, that's what separates a lot of guys from the mid card to the main event is your ability to cut a promo. Um, so I hope you guys can take these tips um, and have them help you out. And I hope it can help you out in your professional wrestling and your promo because when I used to get the promos, I was really terrible at it and I had to really work 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 i used to they used to interview me like a mean gene kind of a thing and i would give and, and they would actually sit us down sit me down and i would give one word answers they and they would try to open it up and say more and say more and i give one word answers uh so definitely what you want to do is practice 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 uh les brown says it doesn't make perfect because there is no perfect in this world practice is going to make you efficient and it's going to make you better at it and it's going to help you succeed so i'm joey chaos thank you guys for tuning in here at santino brothers wrestling academy uh well at least the wrestling academy office um and i hope to catch you guys on the next video i hope this helped you out thank you guys